Hello friends, this is Nirmal here for Technique and in this video we are going to do the detailed review of the Samsung Galaxy J3 2016 variant which was announced by Samsung in India a couple of weeks back. So this is a new budget smartphone uh, and also uh, this is priced below the 10k price point. Uh, this was first announced uh, back in 2015 and now this is called the 2016 variant of the J3. And uh, in the specs front, uh, this comes with a 5 inch uh, HD display, it's a super emulate panel. It's powered by the Spectrum uh, quad core chipset, uh, it's a 64 bit uh, chipset coupled with 1.5 gigabyte RAM and 8 gigabyte internal storage. On the camera front, this is an 8 megapixel rear camera, uh, LED flash, front facing uh, 5 megapixel camera, a 2600 milliamp hour battery, and uh, there is Android 5.1.1 lollipop along with TouchWiz UI. Now that is the spec aspect, now let's move on to the detailed aspects about this device. So first step, let's see the design and build quality. So design wise, Samsung hasn't done anything new to the device and uh, this looks exactly similar to any of the Samsung budget smartphone, be it the J2, J5, even the J7, everything looks very similar. If you look at the rear panel, this is exactly the same what we saw on any of the Samsung phone in the sub 20 k price point. Uh, we have the camera unit, LED flash, the speaker unit, the Samsung logo, everything looks very similar. Uh, the front panel has uh, gone in for a slight change, you can see uh, the white variant also has a black uh, panel here so that's the only change available so this uh, a black panel is available on all the variants be it the white black or the gold variant so that's the only design change again it has this home button uh, to capacity backlit uh, i mean capacity buttons they're not backlit again cost cutting and one of the uh, important aspects about this phone is that there is no ambient light sensor so samsung is again skipping that uh, feature you can see there is an outdoor mode that's the only mode available and you have to use the slider to increase or decrease the brightness so except exactly the same uh, options uh, available in uh, the previous J2 and J5 no ambient light, uh, light sensor shipping with this device too. Now let's move on to the build quality. So it's a fairly decent uh, build uh, phone. I can see the matte finish rear panel, uh, the silver accents around the, uh, the device, uh, making it a decent feel altogether. The black uh, black finishing also looks quite decent. So build quality wise, this is fairly decent device. But design wise, we would say Samsung has to think over a new design uh, in the budget segment, just like uh, they had a uh, new design with the Samsung Galaxy S6. So it's time uh, Samsung uh, thought of a new design in the budget category uh, and apart from that this device doesn't have anything new to offer in the design uh, uh, aspect. Now let's move on to the display. Now while the J2s came with a QHD display, the 960 x 40 pixel, now the J3 comes with an HD display. It's a 720p display and one of the good aspects about this device is an AMOLED panel. It's a super AMOLED panel from Samsung. So the colors are pretty punchy and saturated. The touch response also feels quite good. You can see the viewing angles are really good. So the display is one of the good aspects about this phone. Uh, the colors look punchy and uh, overall the display quality looks quite good uh, for a budget smartphone. But having said that, there is again no protection offered, there is no Corning Gorilla Glass or any added protection, very similar to the J series, other J series phones. So that was the display aspect. Now let's move on to the software. So software, this phone runs Android uh, uh, Lollipop, that's 5.1.1 uh, Lollipop with uh, custom TouchWiz UI. So you can see the software version, Android 5.1.1. And this is the TouchWiz UI, we have uh, seen this on uh, J5, J3, uh, the J2, J7, etc. So nothing's changed, you can see the Cube toggles, they are customizable. We have ultra power saving mode, ultra data uh, mode. Uh, then um, S bike mode, so that's something new. Uh, this bike mode is kind of do not disturb mode, uh, which once enabled, uh, uh, the, this is specifically for bikers. So once this is more enabled, you can see uh, there is a smart reply option. And uh, whenever somebody calls, uh, when this mode is active, uh, he or she gets a notification that this person is riding a bike and cannot answer the call. And if they want to still proceed with the call, uh, you need to stop the bike uh, to answer this call. So this is one, uh, one of uh, the newest features on this budget smartphone it looks really good actually uh, we have already done a detailed video on uh, this uh, mode you can also check out our youtube channel for that video so that's the do not disturb mode uh, the s bike uh, mode so uh, this uh, phone otherwise features most of the options like uh, samsung's built-in tools my uh, my files voice recorder there is smart manager uh, to uh, manage the storage battery ram and uh, it also has ultra data saving mode so uh, if you are on a limited uh, internet connection you can always use the ultra uh, saving mode then there is radio so there, there aren't any uh, any block included by samsung
using just a couple of tools included there is also uh, the opera max and a few other tools like uh, microsoft apps included so now software is uh, fairly decent looking software uh, it is performing software no major lags or issues and this is powered by a snapdragon and this is powered by a uh, spread from uh, quad core 64 bit uh, processor and uh, the performance was quite decent overall uh, with day to day task uh, uh, and uh, using the social networking browsing uh, taking photos uh, and uh, calls uh, that in that case uh, the performance wasn't really a major issue it was able to uh, take up all these tasks but when you push it hard for heavy multitasking and gaming uh, that is where the processor struggles uh, with just 1.5 gigabyte ram so most of the devices in this segment are just moved to 2 gigabyte and 3 gigabyte ram but samsung is struck with the 1.5 gigabyte ram and that really shows up in the performance so in the gaming experience uh, it was not, not really a great device for gaming we could see frame skips and um, uh, the overall performance was in uh, quite up to the mark of a budget smartphone we have better gaming performance in the price point in the form of cool pad note 3 even the lenovo vibe k5 plus and redmi note 3 have a really great performance so the spectrum uh, processor isn't really great in this device uh, except for casual usage uh, which includes uh, uh, camera browsing social networking etc uh, if you uh, you you can't expect this device to be a great performer when you push it harder for heavy task so that was the software and performance side now this phone comes with 4g lte capabilities and uh, you also have a, a, a micro sd card along with the expansion slot uh, so uh, this phone comes just with a uh, 8 gigabyte internal storage which is quite disappointing for a phone uh, in this budget segment a 16 gigabyte should be now mandatory so this comes with just uh, uh, 8 gigabyte internal storage now for customization there are themes and you can download more themes uh, uh, using the my themes app so that's something really good now uh, uh, talking about the other aspects uh, the call quality was quite good on this device uh, the speaker performance is just average not really that great great uh, so that's uh, the software performance of this device now let's move on to the camera so this phone comes with an 8 megapixel camera and if you look at the interface this is quite a um, uh, similar interface what you see on any samsung phone we have the different modes to uh, shoot uh, photos uh, but the disappointing aspect is that it comes with just 720p recording in the sub 10k price point now we have almost 4k recording and samsung is just including a 720p recording which is quite disappointing for camera users uh, now talking about the camera samples, uh, we already done a detailed review of uh, this camera and found it to be quite decent camera overall. You can see some of the photos have come uh, pretty good uh, with good detailing colors, uh, but they're not really consistent uh, and um, uh, the sharpness levels are just acceptable. The noise is kept minimal, but uh, if you look at the low light photos, they're not really that great and uh, they are soft and noisier and uh, also lack of colors is another issue in the low light photos. So overall, we would say considering this price point, it's just an average performer not really the best nor it's it's the worst in this category uh, but then uh, video recording is pretty poor by all standards because it just uh, supports a 720p recording now let's move on to the battery performance so this phone comes with a 2600 milliamp power battery and the battery performance was quite decent overall we tested the battery performance with uh, average usage that is calls browsing social networking a bit of gaming camera usage and we could uh, get one day of usage using this device so that's the battery performance you also have a uh, different battery modes uh, like uh, uh, the power saving mode and uh, you can choose uh, those modes um, uh, from the, either the smart manager where we have the battery performance you can see a uh, power saving mode and ultra power saving mode and you can get additional battery life so the battery performance is quite decent on this device so summing up this device is priced uh, uh, 8990 uh, that's almost 9k uh, in india so for this pricing the, is this device really value for money but if you're looking for samsung trusted uh, sales and warranty and uh, after sales uh, uh, service network then uh, probably this device makes sense because many of the online players do not have uh, uh, that kind of a service network and uh, the brand trust is something if you're looking for then samsung galaxy j3 is a uh, pretty decent buy uh, and uh, it's much better than the Samsung Galaxy J2. But if you're looking for a really value for money device, we would say you should be looking at other, other options like the Coolpad Note 3. We have the Lenovo Vibe K5 Plus, even the Redmi Note 3 price at 999 offers a ton of value. Uh, and uh, much better than the Samsung Galaxy J3. So that was the detailed uh, review of the Samsung Galaxy J3. Hope you liked this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.
have a great day